Hi, welcome to episode 45 of The Chess Files. The answers are out there. I'm James Ede, you can call me Jim, of the Ede Foundation. And so I want to talk a little bit about me, of course, and I want to talk about the Ede Foundation, and then I'll talk about the topic of the day. Because The Chess Files, the answers are out there, means that we have a question. And what is the question of the day? I'll get to that in a minute. Now, I started out as a chess player. I started out in 1972. No bonus points for guessing why. But I got to be good pretty quick. I got to win adult tournaments when I was a little kid. And I became an FM, uh, a FIDE master. And what is a FIDE master? A FIDE master is someone good enough to fight with grandmasters, but not good enough to become one. And so I turned my attention to other things. I organized Grandmaster Norm tournaments, International Master Norm tournaments, FIDE Futurities, that sort of thing. And I, I got into writing and organizing tournaments and doing a whole bunch of other stuff. I wrote Chess for Dummies, which is one of the best-selling books of all time. And I think that uh, I was recognized in 2018, if I remember correctly. Oh, yeah, there it is, 2018 for Outstanding Career Achievement. But that's enough about me. What about the Eid Foundation? E Foundation is a 501c3 charitable organization. So that means if you can write a check to us, you can write part of it off on your taxes. And if people still do that, I don't know. I, that's not one of the questions we're answering today. But um, it, it's whatever you send to us, we will use it to help others. The E Foundation is dedicated to build, sharing our resources, the resources that we have with those that do not have the resources to join the chess community. The chess community can be joined. If you have that internet access, you can get an opportunity to play anyone, anywhere, at any time. It doesn't matter what country you're from. It doesn't matter what language you speak. It just doesn't matter. But there are people that don't have that internet access. So we can send them chess equipment and chess literature, things like that, that help them build a community wherever they are. And if you're part of a community, you're never alone. And that's what the foundation does. Um, so, you know, we're, we're in various places um, uh, that like, uh, let's see if I could pull up this one thing I'm looking for and I can't find it. Uh, you know, we're in, we're in multiple countries. Oh, I know where it is. I'm look, am I looking in the right place? I'm not looking in the right place. There it is. This, these are all the countries that we're in right now, and I feel like we're just getting started. Um, and this is this is the most important thing I could tell you today is let you help us help them. These are the people that we want to help, and we can't do it without you. So we ask for your support. But today's chess files. The answers are out there. What's the question? The question is, what is the Colty Conference? I was at the U.S. Open this year and I saw this piece of literature. The third international Koltanowski conference on chess and education. And I asked myself, what is that? So I, not knowing too much about it, asked for two guests to come on to, to tell me, what does that mean? And uh, I, you see, on the, on the bottom of this, it says it's sponsored by the U.S. Chess Trust. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the U.S. Chess Trust. Who are they sponsoring this? It was pretty interesting. So I asked Al Lawrence, who's the manager of the Chess Trust, and Beatrice Marinello, Beatri Beatrice, Beatrice, um, <laughs> sorry to put your name, but um, you're on the trust as well. And, but you were both integral parts of starting up this conference. And can you tell me, I'll, I'll start with you, Beatrice. Uh, what, what was your role in organizing this conference? It's the third one. Well, I was a member. I was a member. Thank you for inviting me, Jim. Oh. And thank you, everybody, for listening to this program. Um, well, basically, the Koltanowski, and I would like to go a little bit back. I'm not directly answering your question. Uh, Jim, the Koltanowski conference was uh, created by Dr. Tim Redman, who was um, who also founded the the UT Dallas Chess Program, and he was a professor there, and he was a good friend of uh, Grandmaster George Koltanowski, who at some point was a president of the U.S. Chess and became well known for his role in promoting chess around the country playing blindfold chess, uh, popularizing Swiss tournaments. It was uh, Barry who contribute, contributed, you know, to the chess community. And in his honor, 
um, Tim Redman started the conference in 2001. Then he hosted the conference in 2011, again in Dallas, in conjunction with a chess tournament, the National Great Championship K-12. K through 12. And this year, 2021, because it happens every 10 years, we're supposed to organize the conference. And, um, and the US Chess Trust is the sponsor of the event, the main sponsor of the event. This, this year actually was the only sponsor of the event. Um, and we were in a situation in which until the last minute, we didn't know whether or not we could host the conference in person because of COVID and, you know, and the regulations in, um, yes. in the state of New Jersey. The plan was to host it in conjunction with the U.S. Chess um, Invitational Tournaments, U.S. Open, and the U.S. Chess Annual Meetings. So basically my role, because I'm a member of the U.S. Chess Trust and a trustee, was to bring the organizing team with three other people. Um, my main motivation, besides an, an, ed an educator, and obviously my passion is teaching chess, it was to honor this great man uh, who did a lot for chess, Kortanowski, uh, to also, you know, give a tribute to um, to Dr. Redman, who has done so much for chess. Shout out to Tim. Yeah. And then uh, and support my dear friend, uh, Leroy Dubek, who was also one of the sponsors, and he wanted to do this conference. So I was in the organizing team together with uh, Dr. Leroy Dubek, Al Lawrence, who is the managing director of the U.S. Chess Trust, former executive director of the U.S. Chess Federation, and many more things. I mean, it's hard to even describe him in, with two titles. And the fourth person was Dora Martinez, our technical person who did a lot to support us as well. Oh, great. So Al, you got teed up there. Good introduction. Um, and tell me a little bit about how the U.S. Chess Trust is supporting this, why they're supporting it, and, and what is the, the conference, what's the point at the conference at all? Well, it's um, chess and education, of course, is one of the keystone um, um, ideas uh, behind the trust. We want to uh, um, educate people about chess, but we know that chess uh, helps them fulfill uh, many, many parts of their lives. Uh, and we know that kids, uh, particularly, we know that kids in school do better at their studies and uh, have a better attitude about things as well if they play chess and if they experience chess in the right way. So, you know, we're all about chess and education. Um, and I also want to say that uh, Beecher's been a little uh, quite modest there. Um, it was a really impending task to take over organizing this uh, this event with, I think we had one month when the governor of, uh, of uh, New Jersey said that larger crowds were permitted. As a matter of fact, before that, the um, US Chess Federation had begun to organize the events as online again. So that that's how much of a shift it was, you know? Right. Um, and uh, uh, Beatrice really took this on and took charge of it. Yes, uh, she, she had some help, but uh, uh, she, she made it possible, particularly with uh, her uh, really wonderful choices of the presenters that she, um, uh, in, that she got to present, invited and cajoled some of them into yeah. presenting. And, uh, you know, the, um, we as an organizing committee, and I, I, d I definitely want to mention again Dora Martinez. She was a dynamo at the whole thing. She uh -huh. was, wouldn't, wouldn't be possible without Got that. Out the door. Um, but um, uh, we were the, the, the background. You know, we were kind of mostly behind the curtain. It, uh, the people that made it work were the presenters. Now, Dr. Dubeck and Beatrice were both presenters and did excellent presentations, but it was also international. Yes. Uh, Beatrice had uh, um, outstanding authorities on chess, uh, intelligence and aging, one uh, reporting from Tokyo, uh, PhD Friedland. Um, and uh, we, we heard from people who were very involved with, uh, with chess and education in England as well. That's great. 
Um, so the idea is that you were collecting people from around the world to come to one place and give their presentations in person. Um, and people would compare notes, I guess, or talk to one another. And or... Beatrice? Yeah, well, you know, the, usually besides that, you know, the, the, the information that is given to the general public and the people attending the conference, and we have the videos of the conference that they will be released at some point, um, I think it fairly soon, hopefully December. Um, I mean, no December, September. <laughs> that, it could be a joke, that one. Al. Um, it was the opportunity to gather um, and exchange ideas with other educators, brainstorming, uh, comparing notes. I think we created um, an atmosphere that was for educators and, um, and chess was part of it. So that was quite interesting and unique because there are many talks about chess and chess lectures. Yeah. This conference in particular is geared towards people who are in the field, you know, either teaching or doing research or promoting chess for the, you know, as an educational tool. And I think with that part, we, we did a fairly good job. Um, in the previous uh, conference, there were 35 presentations but basically, they were done simultaneously in different rooms. Oh. And there were no videos at the time or anything. Right. Only the presentations, which we have. But we wanted to do a little more this time. It wasn't a smaller presentation um, for, for, from a selected group of people. Uh, we couldn't invite other people, too, obviously. We have fantastic people around the country and the world. Sure. Who can share their experience, their knowledge. But we needed people in person, and for that, we choose people that they were able to come. Some people didn't, they couldn't come, or they didn't want to come, considering the COVID situation. So, so there's a conference, chess, you know, chess and education conference on time, you know, in the times of COVID. Yeah. Which well, is it was a, a combination of people who uh, were on via, via video yeah. and people who were actually there. And some of the panels were comprised of a combination of these things. Right. Um, um, and uh, I, this is the very first one that uh, was recorded. So it will be available for all time as, as an archive. We think that's very important. I do too. Um, uh, there will later be a volume uh, uh, that will be edited um, um, by Dr. Redman. Uh, but the videos will be available uh, for free uh, on the uh, uschesstrust.org website. That's fantastic. You know, I know that the first conference had a little book published um, to record the papers that were submitted, but this preservation of the, of the material, I think is so important. And nowadays that we can do it through video. You can even have attendees participate through, through Zoom or through any other video, video mechanism. And um, so it's using technology uh, that is available to us now that maybe wasn't available in 2001. And I think I applaud a tip of the hat to you guys, one for pulling it off, which is astounding. Um, well, I, was pretty, I was pretty intimidated. You know, uh, Beatrice was the one that uh, kept telling us we could do this thing. Yeah. <laughs> she, she was like the hockey coach, you know. Yeah. She was uh, <laughs> telling us we could win this one. Yeah. <laughs> and, up, uh, you yeah, I, I think that uh, uh, people should also know that it was seen as important uh, uh, to, to chess people around the world um, uh, as well. You know, uh, we the at the opening, uh, we had the president of FIDE welcoming people to the conference. We had the president of the U.S. Chess Federation, Mike Hoffpower, uh, welcoming us to the conference. Uh, um, the executive director of the U.S. Chess Federation was there throughout, very supportive and um contributing um so so it was really an international 
and uh, very much respected an uh, event. You know, I, I wonder if it's possible for you to show that group shot and uh, Beatrice can actually tell you some of the individuals who were there and presenting. You know, that's a that's a good idea, Al. Let me let me look to see if I can find that. This this one is this the one you're talking about? Yeah, yeah. So oh. we're not so vague about who you know was there and doing things. Yeah. Okay. So, Beatrice, can you can you tell us? Uh, let's start with the back left. The back left. So there we have Elliot Le uh, Elliot Neff, ah. who is the founder and CEO of the chess for life uh, organization um, he uh, he presented about chess and life skills then um, then Karen is the lady standing next to him she didn't present she was in the audience uh -huh. then we have Joshua Anderson, Anderson mm -hmm. who's actually who's in charge of the oral history project Ah, and he wanted to be there, so he was there throughout the whole event. Also, the president of the Chess Journalists of America. Exactly, and he's yeah. also the president of the Chess Journals of America, and yeah. it was very nice that he was there. Yeah, in person. Then uh, we have um, Carol Myers, executive director of the U.S. Chess Federation, who attended the conference. Uh huh. Uh, John Rockefeller the fifth who made a presentation about chess and philanthropy. The first day we had, it was a two days event, a wonderful presentation. And he obviously has done a lot for American chess. Yes. And recently made a donation of $3 million to, to US chess for the invita wow. invitational championship. So that's somebody who's extremely committed to make a difference in chess. Yeah. And is he as tall as he looks in, in, in the photo? Yes, indeed. Okay. In the picture. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, I, but I'm not as short as I look in the floor. There you go. Um, <laughs> like him, somebody who's here with us, yeah. very humble, <laughs> Al Lawrence, Managing Director of the U.S. Chess Trust, yeah. uh, who was also the, the MC for the event, the Master of Ceremony. Oh, cool. and he made presentations. He gathered everybody. He put everybody together. He did a fantastic job. You know, I've seen. I have him to do say that. it. Al, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm doing. I've seen him do that before, and he, he is really good at it. Fantastic. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. Very very good at it, and um, so that also contributed greatly to the success of the event. When you have nice people around and everybody feels comfortable, absolutely, you get the best out of them. Then uh, a dear friend of mine, it's called David McAnulty. Oh, yes. They made a movie of his show. life. Great guy, yeah. And great guy. The Knights of the South Bronx. He was the director of the Dorton Chess Program. Before that, he was in C um, in, um, in a school in the Bronx. Yes. CS70, I think it was. Yeah. So, and next to him, it was one of um, somebody who's the chief research for Microsoft in New York City, one wow. of the top experts in the world about artificial intelligence. Wow. And he, um, his name is Sid Sen, Dr. Mm -hmm. Sid Sen. And he created a program that is called Maia. It's a chess playing program. And his idea is to use artificial intelligence for humans to learn. And he's testing his ideas by using chess. Can so, can I can I put in a word about that? Of course. Uh, what I thought was the uh, fascinating part of his presentation was he creates programs uh, that clone a player's style and talent and knowledge. Oh, that's so, so funny! So, that, so, that's so he takes another. takes if they if they take a thousand games of someone, um, um, they they sort of create the. Uh, AI version of that player. Now you could do that with the GMs and the world championships where we have enough games. Yeah. Um, and, and you think of it as it gets better and better. If you could actually be pay, uh, playing Botvinnik, you know, yeah, as an amateur. So he, I think he's really onto something there. I didn't mean to interrupt me, but I thought that no, was. No, but I thought you were going to say something about West Side Story. That's yeah, that's, him and I, we did a presentation about how we learn. Because yeah. in my view, I mean, actually yesterday I had a meeting with the head of the school and the, the idea, I mean, I think you have, considering what is going on during COVID, the pandemic, uh, is teaching us that it's not all about winning because 
you see that now most a lot of competitions and not most most com chess competitions they are being done online, and there are situations of fair play, or you know people learning, but also using it in a way that they should they shouldn't be using it. Uh -huh. So the word winning has a different meaning. Um, so I think uh, the idea that we use chess as an educational tool, but mostly to teach critical thinking and how to think. Yes. yes. And then transfer that you know, process to learning other things. And Dr. Sen has a similar idea that he believes the artificial intelligence should not be trained to dominate the world, for the world domination. Artificial intelligence should be used for humans to learn things that they, they have been difficult for us to learn. And there are some things that artificial oh. intelligence is doing better than humans, but others that humans were doing better than, than, uh, than artificial intelligence. Um, so he's, uh, he's a remarkable person. He's one of my parents. And I, I was so happy when he decided to come. So we didn't, oh, yeah. we didn't have more room for presentation. So I changed my previous idea for a presentation and we put one together that I think worked well. And I was delighted to see him there because I'm so he had so many interesting ideas. Al, I thought when you jumped in, you you were going to go on, off of the name in it, Maria, and do a little riff on West Side Story. But uh, that sounds more interesting. Well, I, I'd have to get paid then. Yeah. I'd <laughs> <laughs> okay, Beatrice, who's next? Um, and I love West Side Story too, by the way. <laughs> um, and then in the left, sitting down, uh, there is a um, chess expert, Adia Django. Who's also I don't know if he's, she's currently, but she used to be the um, the chair of the U.S. Women Committee, mm -hmm. and she made a presentation about women in chess with Kim Do McVeigh, who's sitting on the other side next to. But I will introduce her later. So that's Adion Yango. Then is yours truly sitting next to her. Okay. And then Sophia Roth, who's the director of the Columbia Grammar Chess Program. Uh -huh. And she spoke about, you know, adapting to teaching chess, you know, during pandemic times. And um, she also invited a group from England to join her. Oh, she's from England originally, right? That, that's right. Um, yes, but she had connections. That's great. And Good. John MacArthur, who's also teaching uh, chess at Columbia Grammar. So they made it three. It was a three ways presentation. Wow. OK, cool. Then Kimberly McVeigh, who's a huge supporter of chess and, and women in chess. Yes. So it was wonderful that she came and she basically, she joined uh, forces with Adia in her presentation. Oh. And, you know, the, the last person, but not the least, uh -huh. a famous legendary chess coach, uh, Bruce Pendofini, who has written over 40 books about chess who was uh, one of the chess consultants for the Queen's Gambit Netflix series. And also something that people don't know about him, he is one of the co-founders of the New York City Chess in the Schools organization. Yeah. Uh, somebody who has been, been dedicating his life Great to program, chess. Right. Yeah, and it was fantastic that he came to support it. So basically it was a good, good that was day one. And then on day two, we had another group coming, including Sunil Veramantri, uh -huh. who has done so much for Scholastic Chess. Yes, shout out to Sunil. The US chess Trust, exactly. So we had a second group coming on um, on the sec on, uh, on Friday. Um, du Duane Barber, the Dean of Scholastic Chess, also made a brief presentation about the invitational tournaments. So it was a wonderful group of people. And I and I just want to mention again the people who aren't in the picture because they were in other countries. There was uh, uh, I mentioned already Dr. Friedland, who I think made uh, a fantastic uh, a presentation uh, that was um, um, in, in in tandem with Dr. Dubeck, and it was about how chess uh, may fight off Alzheimer's and dementia and the physiological changes uh, during. Uh, of chess playing, of playing a game of chess, that the um, 
when you play a game of chess, uh, your heart rate, various things go up to, you know, marathon levels, as, as you know well as a, as a player, and how that, uh, that might actually uh, uh, provide some, some fitness. We're not saying substitute chess for everything, but, but uh, it, 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 uh, it, it, it could help. Uh, and then um, also, you know, we had um, a, a very, and Beatrice made this uh, particular section so, uh, so uh, informative because he's such a great interviewer. We, we had the uh, FIDE managing director and deputy chair, um, who is really uh, the woman in charge of uh, education in FIDE, I think, right, Beatrice? No, actually, she's the CEO of FIDE now. Executive oh, wow. director. She really? She's the deputy president of the management board of FIDE, woman grandmaster. And she's also a former president, I mean, former minister of finances of the Republic of Latvia. Right. Her name is Dana. I will tell you in a second. And uh, me, Dana, so you're this and I'm st spelling your name incorrectly because I think it's Osola, the last one of your last names. Um, so then uh, very, I think I had a, I have a very good feeling about her and what she can bring to FIDE. And you, considering she came to do a presentation, it was very informative, but, it, but then in the end we arranged a one-on-one -on, -one on Zoom and we introduced her to the people attending the conference and we had a chance to ask her some questions and make some comments. And so that was also very important to make that connection yeah. Virtually, but meaningful. Well, you mentioned FIDE. Uh, that's an acronym, I assume. For right, exactly. Yes. It, for, it's, that, it's, go ahead, Al. Well, I mean, uh, my French isn't uh, worth trying, but the translation basically is the World or International Chess Federation. Yeah, yeah. so it's world uh, world governing organization for chess. So we have and, and, and Beatrice, can can you say a few words by uh, about another panel? that you were involved with that I, I found yeah, so interesting on I, disabilities? I wanted to mention that. Thank you so much, Al. Um, we had a presentation by Pranav Shankar. Um, Pranav is autistic. And um, he was actually, Jim, you know him well. He he came to the oh, World yeah. Youth yeah. Championship, remember? That yes, you met I remember. Yeah, he was the one. He was always asking you questions, yes. <laughs> running, running around, asking you things. Well, Pranav, Pranav has been mature a lot more. Uh -huh. um, he did a fantastic presentation. He also showed one of his games. He spoke about the importance of inclusion in chess, which is very important for us, not just in chess, also in education and in society. Um, he... We, we practiced three times on Zoom before he came and did the presentation because he, yeah. he's very precise. So he yeah. wanted to know exactly the questions. Right. And then he basically did his own thing. And he did a fantastic job. It was a very, awesome. um, it was a good presentation, but also I think we were all very touched by yeah. his effort and his willingness, willingness to advocate for a group of people that usually don't have a voice. And, um, and he's connecting through chess. He's making friends in the, you know, through chess and I remember his dad too. very important yeah. for his all dad was really people. supportive and good. Yeah, it was it, that, that was a wonderful and, connection. And, and that was a, there were lovely moments at uh, the conference uh, during that uh, particular discussion. Uh, and it's and to see his love of chess, yeah, and what chess has done with him and for him yeah. was uh <laughs> Uh, was really emotional. <laughs> yeah, and Beatrice did such a wonderful job uh, interviewing, uh, interviewing him and bringing him out. It's lovely. Yes, that, that's lovely fantastic. Person. Tip of the hat to you and to him. Uh, so that's that's fantastic. I just wanted to point out that um, I've had three of the people. Let's see, one, two, three in the back row on my show, and four in the front row. Uh, including Bruce, who you mentioned, and he was also one of the cons chess consultants for the, the Queen's Gambit. And um, yes. the, the Netflix um, show has done a great deal for chess. Has, have you guys seen anything like that? Or any more acceptance in the chess for ed in education? Do people are more accepting of the idea that chess can be good in educational situations? Has that had any effect? 
Jim, may I say that, uh, and this is for everybody, I think this is just the beginning. Chess has a lot of, I mean, the, in the previous conference, you know, when um, Tim Redman wrote the introduction of the book, they made a book about the first, first conference. Basically, in the introduction, he said, there is no proof that chess can directly affect any particular subject in education but it may help with life skills. That was his conclusion in 2001. 2021, this has been diversified. Uh, now we had a presentation about using chess as a way, as a brain fitness for this, you know, no prevention because it's no. very hard to prevent Alzheimer's. I mean, it's a pathology to yes. slow down the, the yes. developing. And we have Dr. Freiland, who's actually a, a neurologist and a researcher for the University of Kentucky. And currently he's doing uh, research in Japan about, you know, the the guts and the bacteria and the gut and the, you know, and right. basically the influence. They believe now that we have two brains, actually. One yeah. is in our head, the other one is in our stomach, in our guts. My, my, the one in my stomach is bigger than the one in my head. Oh, okay, <laughs> mine too. That's true. Because there's so much room there. <laughs> there's much more room. More capacity, yes. But my point is, you know, back then we didn't know about these things. So it was important to begin with that. Um, another area that we didn't have a chance to touch, I wrote an email to Dr. Howard Garden, who created the, the theory of multiple intelligence, which was, he was the person who opened the door for chess in the schools in a way, in a more traditional way, uh, he answered and he recommended somebody, but he couldn't come. And so ba basically because of the pandemic, he decided not to come. But it would be fantastic to have Howard Gardner attending. But the main, uh, there are two important areas now in education that they will be directly, or actually three, directly related to chess. One is chess to help us improve critical thinking. Yes. Because we need to be able to start distinguishing what is real and what is, what is not. What information is, you know, so judging, understanding, so critical thinking. And the other area, it has to do with executive function of the brain, which is related to, to self-control, to organization, to making decisions. Yes. And again, chess, is directly languages and chess. They are huge when it comes to developing uh, executive function in our brains. So chess is just study, and the third one is life skills. I mean, and you can say fitness. I mean, I think this is just the beginning. Uh, it's not about who's the best player in the world, or the best player in the right. classroom, or the best player right. in the city. It's the benefit that you can get from using the brain and and learning how to uh, to learn other things through the process of learning chess. So it's, there are a lot of benefits. This is just the beginning. In 10 more years, hopefully, we will have another conference and yeah. there will be other findings. And, you know, they may take this one. The progression, I think, it has been interesting too. To have it every 10 years is, is, is an interesting path. Well, I have to tell you, Vicious, um, it, that Al and I are old enough to remember when we would go into a principal's office and recommend doing a chess program for them for free, and they would look at us like we were crazy. You know, why would they want to do that? And then at, at years later, they would be coming to us, asking us to do it, because they the parents were the ones putting the pressure on them, because they saw that the kids that were involved in chess programs were more successful, and they were doing better and they wanted a chess program in their school so they wouldn't be behind. And, you know, I say when we, and this is part of the E Foundation's fundamental thinking, is that when you give the gift of chess to a child, you give a gift that lasts a lifetime. And the, the things that we've seen, I've seen in person with my own eyes, is, you know, they give them skills that are directly transferable back into the classroom. 
And that's why they are more successful. The ability to sit still and think, well, that was not a gift that I had naturally. I learned that through chess, to sit still, because I was always bouncing around. And a lot of kids are just bouncing around. And you know, but you have to sit still and think in chess. And then what you were just referring to is the postponement of immediate gratification. Everybody wants to move their queen out really fast. And then you learn, oops, uh, I have to keep moving it so it won't get captured. Um, so you you do have to plan. And that's the executive thinking that comes in and says, yeah. okay, if I do this and they do that, and all of a sudden you're thinking ahead and planning. And these are things that we don't naturally, none of our, if you're taking English or you're taking math or, or the way that it's taught anyways, and these other subjects that, you know, they don't necessarily teach those skills. And when you introduce the chess program, the kids get it. You know, they think they're at play at recess, but they're learning these skills and they're directly transferable back into the classroom. And so now the parents see it and they put the pressure on the administrators and the administrators are coming to us. So I think you're right. It's just at the beginning, we're just getting started. I think yeah. our jobs as educators is to inspire children to become life, uh, lifetime learners. Yes. And chess is more than a subject. It's, a, it's the foundation to learn how to learn other things. That's, um, and learn how to distinguish and how to recognize patterns. And then basically we can learn so many other things. I mean, uh, the learning process needs to go, we need to encourage that. Uh, why? Because in this society, there are so many things that they're to make things easy for us that they don't allow us to use the brain. I mean, if we watch TV, the processing part of the brain not, is not working. If we do video games, it's reacting a little bit, but it's not processing. So we, we the, chess is a game that has been around for 1,400 years or more, I don't know. You know, we, we can debate this. But the point is, it's very current, it's very useful. And if it's taught correctly, with the appropriate values and life skills, it's a tremendous educational tool. And that's basically the, the idea. Yeah. And all, this, all the skills that Jim was talking about, then you put them in a social context and it's magnified, magnified uh, the, the, the benefits that it provides uh, because it's not isolated. You're not setting in you know, your, your back bedroom on the video. You're, you're interacting with people at the same time all these skills are being built. Yeah. Um, that's, why, <clears throat> that's why actually the, the mission of the U.S. Chess Trust is to improve lives through chess because it really does improve lives. It really does. And each foundation has been supportive of the chess, U.S. Chess Trust. And will certainly have. To be, will continue to be because I, I'm very much inspired and uh, in touch, in tune with your mission. Well, you know, I want, I want to congratulate you on uh, the EADS Foundation support of, of chess around the world. And, uh, you know, I know you work as the trust does within the U.S., but you work all over the world supporting kids that can't afford a chess board, can't afford chess pieces. And I think you do wonderful work. Thank you, Al. You, and you, thank you both. And i so appreciative of you coming on and telling us about the Colty conferences, chess in, in education is really um, taking off, I think, and, and can add so much, even if it's an incremental improvement in society, it's an improvement. And we teach these kids to think like we were just talking about, you know, maybe when they hear something on, on the television, they won't drink uh, bleach in order to cure their COVID. You know, so it's, it's you know, this is, who knows where, where this will lead in terms of our society. Maybe it's just a small increase, but any increase will be welcome. And you guys are doing so much good work on this behalf. And you can tell that I don't have my producer today. So that I've been struggling with the graphics and, but I've gone over the allotted time. So I'm gonna say goodbye to both of you, but- Oh, oh wait a minute, no, no, I can't do Maria? But no, not, no, I have no money to pay you. Well, Jim, you're great. Beatrice, you're you're always fantastic. Thank you. It's oh, great to get together well, with all with both of you. A Thank pleasure you. To, to see you. Thank you so much to, I for the ask... invitation and everything that you do Thank through you. your foundation to support people around the world. 
you know, I always want to give my guests an opportunity. To, is there something I forgot to ask you that you really would have liked me to ask you? Is there something you want to say before I let you go? Idris, anything? I think we've done a... He's, well, you know, we wanted to thank you. Uh, and also, I think it's very important that each of us, we take the time to talk to other people about this, to inspire the other people, to spread the love for chess and the benefits of learning chess and how you know how beneficial chess is not just for children also for people of our ages especially seniors these days that they need something that will keep their brains active so uh, thank you Jim, and, for the invitation and, and i would just and like to add yeah. i'm sorry and I'm i would sorry. just like to add uh www dot us chest trust dot org yeah i should have scrolled that banner across uh no, that's and, good. Uh, to, to top up the seniors you know we do do programs for juniors scholastics and and seniors and this is me bringing the uh and i think it says chest trust on that the side of that i can't see it but uh yeah but uh, it was it was um, opening uh just so getting a chess program started in senior centers i think is a great mission too absolutely it's one of our missions yes Okay, so thanks both of you for, for attending you, and I'll just do my little wrap up and I will undoubtedly talk to you both uh, some other time. Okay. All right, so that was Al Lawrence and Beatrice Marinello talking about the third annual international Colty Conference. It's every 10 years, but man, it's worth the wait. Sounds like they're doing a great job. And I just wanted to tell you a little bit about the foundation. It's every Friday at 1 p.m. we do the chess files. The answers are out there. And the question will vary, the guests will vary, but the idea is that we have answers and we want to be open to what the, we have questions and we want to be open to what the answers are. And if you help the foundation do it, perform its mission, you are helping us to help others. And I think that is what I want to leave you thinking about today. How do you help others? And how do you help others help others? And who knows where it will stop? So that's the Eid Foundation's mission. And uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, I hope you see me next week. And uh, goodbye and good